So have we checked out the units of the Great Bridge yet? We have Coda's Army and General Domez. Who, um, yeah, minus one attack speed is surprisingly high for someone like him, but he's got pretty solid defense, but no magic, and we just got a pretty decent mage. We've got a few more uh, armor knights here, as well as an artilleryman. Okay, this is our first introduction to these guys. Uh, we'll see more of them once we get into the map itself, some more bowmen. High Mage, which is a weird enemy-only class that uses fire, thunder, and winds. And yeah, bishops besides Lee are all enemy only. We have ballisticians as well, who are totally different from... Well, I mean, they're kind of a subcategory of artillerymen, but we'll, we'll see why in a moment. But look at those stats! They have, like, practically nothing except defense and mastery, and of course HP. So there's actually quite a few enemies here. But let's see, so at the Mars Temple, yeah, there's really nothing we can do here. Going back to Graham Forest, though. We're going to have a bit of an, uh, another war council. Well, Master Eisenbach said nothing because he's now dead. So it seems the Gerzel cult has already got involved in this. An ingenious plan, you say? Well, let's hear it. Oh, <laughs> Marlon already mentioned that for me. Eugen has a cunning plan. Though this cunning plan is, I think it actually relies a little bit on deployment slots, which is kind of annoying because, you know, tearing saga deployment slots, you have no idea where everyone goes until you play the map. So this, this is interesting. So this event right here, all of this is what we set in motion by visiting the house with Narsus back in map 3. Yes, the Liberation Army is the army that will liberate Wells. I can kind of see why they changed it to Deliverance in Echoes. Still interesting how in-universe Sasha is treated as the leader of this army, not Runin even though she's not really much of a fighter, but then again, most leaders really aren't. So thankfully, missing the conversation between Sasha and Martell in Map 4 doesn't um, cause you to miss out on the Pegasus Flute. I was worried that it might, given how intricate a lot of the events are in this game. I'm not sure this will really work, but hey, it may work on his knights. Narsus is a pretty decent guy when it comes around to it. I wonder if this was uh, some kind of um, Kegor versus uh, impolite speech slip up in the Japanese version. It probably was. It's always interesting having to localize stuff like that. But as you can tell, that wasn't really Coda. <laughs> At least that guy fell for it. Please never talk like that dressed as that guy.
Narcissus is actually pretty talented at disguises. Though he's not that great at impressions to back it up. And he got slapped anyway. So notice that? If you didn't visit the house with Narcissus, you wouldn't have been able to see that event. And that has very, very bad implications for Mel. Zeke is already striking up a conversation with a member of our army. Yeah, see, that is the thing. We have someone on our side from Barge already, and he probably wouldn't know about, um, this guy. Raffin was pretty high up there. But, I mean, it kind of makes sense that everyone would be suspicious of him. He was with the Dark God Cult. The worst part is, these kind of whips really existed. People really were punished like this. You know, I'm pretty sure anyone would do what he did in that situation. And that increases the support between those two. Nothing to buy here. Is there any item rearranging that I need to do? Oh right, I should probably give Zeke some stuff. In particular, I like giving him um, javelins or ranged axes. Since I'm not really using Bart's, I can probably have him... Um, Oh, he already had a, um, a halberd. Uh, have him take that hammer. I might finally have Sasha use the Angelic Potion. Okay, I think that's good on items. Let's move out to the Great Bridge of Not Murden. Because that came out way later than this. Like, 18 years later. Now this map for some reason counts as a sea map, even though it's a river, so the seafarer skill will be active for Garrow and for anybody you gave it to in um, chapter 1 or 3. So this map, the annoying thing is that they don't tell you about Eugen's cunning plan until you actually begin the chapter, and at that point it's kind of too late and sort of demands a restart. So some people are going to be deploying here, and here, while the rest of the army deploys in the middle. In the middle, it's more recommended that you have cavalry, like um, knights and stuff, to charge down and take these guys on. 
You might need some javelins because there are a lot of ranged attackers here. They'll also run away to be healed by um, this bishop. While on these sides, it's more recommended that you bring on foot characters. Uh, and also maybe flyers, because the frontier terrain is going to force cavalry to dismount. Also, you kind of want Sasha to deploy on the right-hand side. For various reasons. And then, of course, the boss is all the way down here. This is a defeat boss map, so you can rush to this guy and take him down. The tool assisted speedrun does something kind of funny with this map, but uh, also... So, they have a tank. Tearing Saga has wooden, hand-pushed tanks in a medieval setting. And they like to use these um, multi-shot crossbows against you. They are locked into bows and they only have three movement. They're also considered armoured, so they're weak to hammers. Which is why I gave um, Zeke one. They are that annoying type of enemy that I was alluding to earlier that's weak to hammers. So, the problem with this map is it relies on you knowing where to deploy everyone. And that's kind of impossible unless you know in advance. So... I know from having written this down from an earlier playthrough that the top three and bottom three deploy in the middle, and I'm guessing that includes Runen and uh, Enter, so I want Zeke to be in the middle, and I also want the bottom three to also be like strong cavalry, so in that case, bottom three, Raffin, Naren, and somebody else maybe. I mean, if anything, I kind of want to put Bl Plum there, only because she'll die horribly if she's in any of the other groups. So as for the left and right fronts, slots 5, 6, and 9 deploy on the left side, while slots 4, 7, and 8 deploy on the right. I know it makes no sense to me either. Raquel and Sasha need to be in the same group. I think Vega's gonna go on the left. Okay, I hope I have those deployment positions correct. Yeah, I have everyone I wanted to deploy in the center. Well, in the center, so that's a good sign. Yeah, so it's just... I don't know why they don't tell you the plan before deployment. Yeah, he sent a small portion of our troops to infiltrate the enemy camp, but we have no way of knowing which until we play the map because of the way that deployment... Honestly, it might actually be the biggest flaw of this game to me. I really don't know what gave Kaga the idea to never tell you, like, where characters deploy on the map based on their deployment order. It's kind of dumb. Another SWAT ambush is us from behind, you say? Well, yeah, that's vaguely hinting that there might be reinforcements. <laughs> also, how dare you insult Eugen's best strategy ever. <laughs> Eugen is the greatest planner of all time. Oh, it reminds me a little bit of the banter between Dorias and August back in FE5. They were both interesting characters, honestly. I kind of wish more Fire Emblems did stuff like that. But then they kind of fell off in importance later on in the game. Like, August in general is probably one of the more in-depth, um, like, tactician char like the Maladus archetype characters in Fire Emblem, I feel. You know, minus the tacticians who are actually playable, like Robin. Even then, I might even think that, um... He might even have more depth than Robin does. I, I actually find August really interesting. I kind of hope he gets into heroes, maybe. Though I don't know if he, like... I think he's implied to be a mage or something? So, um, one thing that this game did kind of predict in terms of game design with later Fire Emblems is enemy commanders warning you in advance that there might be reinforcements later in the chapter. So that's going to be the case here. So it is time to begin. I have these three over here, and I've got some, um, I've got them to attack the ballistas. So here's the thing, I don't actually need to take down the ballistas until we get very, very close to the enemies. And in general, like, people like Zeke, they don't need to worry too much about the ballistas, although attack of 15 is kind of dangerous, but their hit rate is very, very shaky. Zeke does have completely absurd defense, though. But yeah, my basic idea is to charge my broken cavalry downwards. Okay, Raffin can get into range of a ballista. Uh, 
But we do have plenty of healers up on this end. How good is Naren? Naren's defense is even better than Zeke's. Oh, Naren can actually go all the way down there, but he still won't get into range of any enemies, unfortunately. Now, in my test playthrough, I didn't have Naren, uh, and I certainly didn't have a promoted Naren at this point, so I almost wonder if uh, I'm going to break through the central front too quickly. Because I might actually need somebody to stay back and maybe deal with the reinforcements, but that somebody shouldn't be too powerful because, um, well... Uh, yeah, I already kind of maybe spoiled that, but, um, so yeah, Wundergast is strong, but it also lowers your attack speed a little bit. But considering how ridiculous these, uh, like, ridiculously slow these guys are, it doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, so we've got these, uh, Latin magic words here. I, I can see, like, turbidum or something, which is probably the origin of the English word turbine. Marouge does pretty well against these guys, but uh, as I've said in, like, earlier, I, I do feel like, like, I don't know, he's, he's not super amazing in terms of overall, ah, oh, that barely doesn't do enough to kill. I don't like wasting Shram on these chumps, but I'm gonna have to do that. Like, it, it's kind of weird how I feel about mages in Tyrion Saga. They're usually useful, but it's often because of things like, um, like their personal weapons and things like that, and I just find that... Wundergast, you actually need to be critting in order to, to do well with that, and I don't know. Now, I actually forget if Martel's um, strength goes down if she dismounts. I mean, I'm guessing it probably does, and I will need to dismount her if I'm going to be trying to fight that, uh, that archer, unless I can, by some miracle, one round him. 14 attack on 3. Hmm. Oh yeah, that is a problem, because like, I do one round him that way, but if I miss either of those, then Martel will die, so... Probably safest bet is to maybe... How far can that ballista shoot? Yeah, I'm gonna just play it safe here, go here, dismount her, and then... Oh yeah, she does lose a little bit of strength that way. And it and she loses a bit of skill too, which I, I don't know if... It's kind of weird how riding a Pegasus somehow makes you more skilled with a weapon. That doesn't really make a ton of sense. I, mean, I can understand losing massive amounts of magic or resistance by dismounting your Pegasus because it's it's always implied in these games that the like magical resistance comes from the Pegasus itself and not um, any skill of the rider. Okay, so okay, that ballista can't really shoot anyone that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just use a regular bow gun, which is funny because it sounds like bogan, which is kind of a term uh, in Australia for like a. It's sort of kind of the equivalent. Like think country bumpkin, except living in the city. That's kind of what bogan means. Uh, but yeah, it's it's um. Like, for example, like, the character Dingo Dial from, um, Crash Bandicoot would be considered a bogan. It's sort of an, an Australian thing. I am glad that hit. And Sasha was, like, five? Yeah, five. That's a bit unfortunate, actually. Uh, I suppose there's really no reason not to do that. And yeah, Garrow's got more accuracy here, and he's doubling, so hopefully this goes well. And speaking of accuracy, something on this map that I actually wanted to talk about is that earlier when I said the Tearing Saga is 1RN, I was actually wrong. Well, technically it is still 1RN, or RN means random number, by the way, uh, in terms of like the random number generator or RNG. Technically, Tearing Saga is 1RN, but the it picks a random number from a table. And the table does not have uniform distribution of numbers, so certain numbers are actually more likely than others. And what that means is that just like in later Fire Emblems that take two random numbers and average them for hit rates, in Tearing Saga it is slightly more likely that low hit rates will miss and slightly more likely that high hit rates will hit, but not quite to the extent that it is in Fire Emblem. So, for example, like at the bottom of the chart, like the random numbers go 1 and then 8, which means that anything 7% or lower is effectively only a 1% chance. And the thing about Tearing Saga's um, random number generator is that unlike Fire Emblem, or later Fire Emblem, that uses two random numbers only for accuracy, not for critical rate, 
in Tearing Saga, uh, the, um, this system is used for critical rate as well as accuracy. Which kind of means that 5% supports aren't that useful, because if you only have 5% critical, then that's the same as having 1% critical in this game. So, Nas is gonna drop off uh, this girl right here. Actually, she should look for somebody named Sasha first, for very important reasons. Yeah, which Nas is gonna explain here, thankfully no guy dang it here. So, this is the first uh, consequence of not doing the Narcissus event. No Narcissus means no Mel and no Pegasus flute. Unfortunately, Narcissus has done his job, and now he's just gonna bail on us before Oigen, um... I was gonna say, like, chews his ear out, but, like, <laughs> that's a pretty disturbing expression, honestly. Uh, yeah, true. The bridge is not safe right now. Narcissus is recommending that Mel go ahead and cross the river uh, on the ford. Thankfully, this is an Oregon Trail, so she won't die horribly by trying to cross a ford. That game was apparently a really big edutainment game for a lot of American kids. Obviously, me not being American, I have absolutely zero attachment to the American Gold Rush, so never played that game growing up. Uh, they never made us play that game growing up, but I've heard that, you know, you could do a lot of funny things in that game. The edutainment games that I grew up with were mostly Carmen San Diego, which was also a problem with not being American, because some of their questions on history and geography are, rely on the American curriculum, so if you don't know much about America, you kind of are screwed there. So, anyway, Mel is here. Yeah, Mel's actually on our side now. She is recruited right off the bat, as long as you visited the Narcissus house. Mel is the only recruitable troubadour in the game, meaning that she's the only mounted healer you get, and one of the few healers who can also fight. The weird thing is, being mounted isn't actually all that vital, because Physic has unlimited range. Her base stats and growths both suck, but she has enough mastery at base to use Physic and that's really all that matters. You might think that she'd be good with Leaven Swords, but she really isn't, trust me, I've tried. And even getting Kanto at level 14 isn't as useful as it might sound. But Mel is one of the best staff users in the game, because she gets a personal staff a little later on that grants plus 7 magic to one ally for an entire chapter. This gets ridiculous in combination with certain characters, and I'll definitely be abusing that later on. For now, though, she's really just another Physic user. Not that's a bad thing. And she needs to dismount in order to cross the ford, which is unfortunate. Something to note as well about Mel using swords and, um, uh, and staves, it's kind of like Ready and Dawn in that if Mel equip- well not equips, like if Mel uses a staff, then she will not be able to counterattack with a sword on the enemy phase, so be aware of that. On the other hand though, if she's using a staff, uh, staffs have no weight in this game, so anybody who is using a staff is very hard to die- how the heck did you miss that? <laughs> Like, how do you miss a ballista that is standing right in front of you? Um, but yeah, so for example, I just want to show this. Any enemy that has a staff, they have an attack speed equal to their speed. This can be a major problem. Uh, a really major problem. Uh, because those guys get very difficult to double. And also, they're not worth a lot of experience because their score stat is low, because score is partially influenced by the weapon you have equipped, so killing enemies with weaker weapons is sometimes a valid strategy. Like, as you can see here, Vega's score is like 103. When he equips Shram, his score is like 170 or something like that, so... Yeah, Shram is worth quite a lot of score. Uh, okay, the, 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 the mounting animation just, um, kind of, um... Took a while to come out there. Uh, let's see, yeah, that should be more than enough. Because, yeah, I now know that a 91% hit rate is pretty reliable, although those, those could be famous last words. Let's see. And poke the ballista. There's still quite a few archers and other troops uh, down here. I guess you couldn't canto because she just mounted uh, that turn. 
And there's a whole ton of archers down there. Yeah, bro, yeah these guys actually are slightly smart and will will um, let you come to them. Rudin's pretty good at getting rid of those armored guys with the rapier, but I don't think he's that great against the tank. Let's actually show off Zeke. So, I said back in, um... I could use the hammer here, but I'll have minus two attack speed. But I will have 49 attack power against them, so... I will one-shot, but my accuracy is horrible, whereas with the, um, Devil Lance... I'll do 60. Yeah, that's a guaranteed one round, and, um, yeah, I'd rather do that. I mean, it's not like anyone else can use the Devil Lance, so I don't need to worry about wasting uses, potentially, for other characters. I mean, other people can use it, but they run the risk of uh, backfiring. Oh, I, I can't double you with the Devil Lance. That is... Yeah, I have zero attack speed. That's kind of sad. Okay, let's, uh... I, like, I don't really care that much about getting plum experience. It's going to take a little while for her to have enough mastery for using physical stuff like that. I guess Raffin can go... Uh, Raffin has even worse attack speed. Okay then, what about Naren? Can Naren double with the Javelin? <laughs> okay, not only does Naren have four attack speed with a Javelin, which is kind of crazy for this point, but he also <laughs> has so much strength that he just does this much damage to armors and that is... I, Naren, like, why? Ugh, Naren is just kind of crazy. Oh yeah, but Naren doesn't even have Kanto at all at this point. Uh, should I go down there and equip a Javelin, or should I not? I'm gonna get rushed by a whole lot of archers. That is enough to double, although they are hitting Raffin quite hard in return. I probably should have healed with Plum and then healed with, the, with Raffin with Physic later. That's kind of, uh, bad. Okay, yeah, I think I'll let those two handle that for now, and I'll have Raffin just holding up the rear here. It's not... I'm not gonna break through this turn anyway, so it's not completely vital that I send him down there right now. Uh, okay, how much defense does that guy have? Five. I am gonna just have Sasha wail on this guy repeatedly. She needs to stay here to have Mel talk to her anyway, so I mean, and I also don't want to move Sasha too far forward into the map, because, uh, reasons. So yeah, I'm just gonna have her wail on that guy while, um, hmm. Raquel, I suppose her purpose here is, um, uh, actually it might not be done just yet. Something I can mention about the bow gun as well is that, um, people mentioned this in the comments, but I actually did already know this, I just didn't find a good time to talk about this last time. The bow gun is technically in, um, I probably should have actually had Sasha kill that guy, because she can wail on the ballista as much as she wants later. Well, I mean, I suppose he'll still be alive for a little bit. But, uh, the bow gun was in the original Fire Emblem 1. Uh, yeah, crossbows, uh, have existed since then, not, uh, since Radiant Dawn, but at the same time, they were just a subtype of bows, and I think the bow gun was, like, the only crossbow, except the sniper class in Gaiden is depicted as using a crossbow, even though I don't think there are any actual crossbow weapons in that game. So it's kind of complicated, but yeah, the bow gun is from that. I always thought the name bow gun was also kind of funny sounding. I don't know if it's a real thing, because when I looked up bow gun... Did you just attack Naren who had a javelin equipped? Why would you do that? I mean, congratulations, you actually damaged Naren. That's a feat that not many can uh, say. Unfortunately, it was the last act of your life. Okay, attacking Naren with magic is maybe a little bit stronger. Because, yeah, even the mighty Naren has barely any magic. I like the sound that fire makes when it hits. I am wondering about something, though. Naren actually could be in danger if the enemies here are... What? Oh! Well, now he has that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've actually never used Naren with lethality before, so I don't, like, know how good he is with it, but I'm, I'm guessing very. Because <laughs> my first playthrough, I, I didn't realize that you had to promote him early in order to get that. I actually went up to level 20 Cavalier with him just because I thought that he could reach higher levels thanks to Paragon, which technically that's true, but at the same time, it's much better to promote him early, because the promo gains, you know, they make a huge difference this early in the game. 
I like the sort of the, the red aura that the ballista bolts give off when they fire as well. So what was I saying before? But, but I got interrupted by enemies being dumb and attacking Naren. Oh, okay. We already have the reason why uh, I wanted Sasha to stay at the start of the, at the top of the map. This is the ambush. It might be proximity triggered. I'm not sure if it's proximity triggered or not. I'm going to cliffhanger there, but before I go, I just remembered in editing what that thought was that I didn't get to finish. I'm not sure if bow guns are a real historical thing, because every time I google it, I just get monster hunter pictures.